Hello everyone and God bless. This is Father Mikhail, Father Michael with a other living Orthodox reflection. And tonight I would like to talk to you about the danger of ambition. When I was, uh, and before I continue, uh, please be sure to check the link in the description. I usually include a link to an Orthodox book that might be related to the topic or that might have contained something in it that inspired me to the topic that I'm discussing. Um, I also uh, have the, um, uh, the link to the Discord in there and to the Patreon, uh, which again, Patreon's getting uh, revamped and there's going to be much more on there. Um, I'm also going to be uh, having kind of like more of a, a book review type thing going on on Patreon. I will be doing some book reviews on this channel, but I'll also be kind of going into uh, considering doing a, a book club as well. That's a, a suggestion someone gave me. So if anyone's interested in a Orthodox book club, um, and doing something like that with me through my Patreon, through this channel, uh, please just let me know in the comments and, uh, and it's something I'll look into. Um, bear in mind, I also have my own studies and so sometimes things might fluctuate, but I will make sure to have uh, things uh, uh, scheduled in advance as best as I can so that uh, there's, there's no or little to no interruptions. So that being said, I want to talk about the danger of ambition and the, uh, its other side, arrogance. Uh, my last uh, service at Christ the Savior Russian Orthodox Church in London, Ontario, under uh, Archpriest, uh, Archpriest Vladimir Morin, who I've had on my channel a few times and who I will be bringing back on the channel when I go back to Ontario for a visit, um, Father Vladimir gave me a gift. I, I had confession with him in the altar before heading out west, and he said, I have a gift for you. And uh, my beloved mentor uh, dropped into my hands a double A battery from the remote for the fan. And the significance of it is largely something that I want to keep to myself. Um, it's something very meaningful to me that he, uh, he used to encourage me uh, in my ministry. But the second thing that I would like to point out is what he added to the initial meeting of the battery. And he said, now, as much as a battery can be for, you know, a charge and for energy and for life, um, he said, you'll notice that there's two A's on the battery to warn you against the double-edged sword of arrogance and ambition. Ambition always piggybacks off of arrogance and it can sometimes disguise itself. Sometimes um, ambition or arrogance, I should say, disguises itself behind ambition and it does so by telling us that we're being altruistic that maybe we're doing something for a bigger purpose than ourselves maybe what we want and what we want to accomplish really isn't just for ourselves but will benefit other people and oftentimes ambition can allow us to abandon obedience i've seen ambition uh, affect uh, various parishes that i've either been uh, involved in or have visited and i can see where Ambition has not only turned priest against their people at times, but at other times has turned the people, and more often than not, against the priest. Uh, a lot of the time, new clerics get very excited and can start to become ambitious in how they want to exercise their ministry in the church. And this is why, yet again, it is so important to make sure you do everything with a blessing, because when that ambition is left unchecked, the arrogance soon poisons everything that it touches. And so ambition rears its ugly head and like the venomous poison that it is, it turns the person who holds this ambition against those who love them, who would aid them, or those who might have more wisdom on something than they do. And as a result, ambition actually causes us to become isolated and alienated. Sometimes it can be within a group of people who share this ambition or are as equally ambitious and want to accomplish something. And a lot of the time we convince ourselves, we always do this whenever we have a struggle with a passion or anything, even if we struggle with something like vindictiveness or with gluttony, it's just one more bite or, oh, it's just, it's just my weakness. We often will justify ambition and the arrogance with it by, I know better. What, what I'm doing will benefit others. This really isn't for me, but it is. And a lot of the time ambition is for the building up of our own image, our glory, our bank account, a lot of the time, ambition 
leads us to abandoning the narrow path to Christ. We see how a lot of the time in, uh, in terms of just the broader church life, how ambition has led many leaders, many bishops to compromise with the world, uh, to try to appeal to more people, uh, sometimes disguising this as having a missionary spirit. But then the problem is they're not teaching and instructing others away from the errors of their past, but rather wanting to bring them into the communion of the church, bringing all their baggage. And a lot of the time, this poor pastoring is the result of ambition. Ambition can lead us to make decisions that we're not ready to make. It, it can lead a young man to leave his mother and father before the time has come, and then he's thrown to the wolves in the world. We see, we see something like this in the prodigal son. You know, he thought he could handle his estate and his money, and he abandons his father and becomes a servant to a cruel master who is none other than the devil himself. You know, ambition can lead young women to making career choices that end up collapsing on them. And it's the same for men. And a lot of the time, ambition can lead people in the church to want to accomplish something great, or at least something small, but that might have a long-reaching impact or benefit to them, and they lose sight of the greater picture. They lose sight of the fact that ultimately any service rendered to God is for God and for the building up of the church, for the saving of souls, not for the building up of one's name, not for the padding of one's bank account. It's not for these things. Ambition always leads us to reject the love of our hierarchs, of our parents, and ultimately the love of God. Because God instructs us to be patient, to be long-suffering. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Ambition constantly strains against self-control. It is what tries to sever and gnaw at the line connecting us to that anchor. And what is that anchor? That anchor is the canons. It is the regular life of the church. It is the life of obedience with the desire to imitate Christ, to have humility. And as soon as that line is disconnected through the action of ambition, through its corrosion, we tend to sail off in our ship away from the mainland. We tend to go into distant and strange waters. And as a result, we become consumed by our self-love, by our ideas, by our wants, by our vainglory. We often have to stop and think, where will this lead me? What will this cause? Because more often than not, ambition is the poison that destroys souls, that can upheave families, that can rend a wound between a father and his son, or a son and his mother, or a daughter, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, between parishioners and their priests, between priests and their bishops. This is why we do everything with a blessing, why we should always do everything with prayer. We should always begin every endeavor by saying, Lord, bless this if it be within your will, not by my will. Let your will be done, not mine. It is a tough thing for us to do. A lot of the time, I get it, we might think that we have everything figured out. But many saints have warned against this poison. This is something St. Joseph the Hezekiah had warned about. It is one of the reasons why he humbled Elder Ephraim so much in the beginning. It's because pride always leads to ambition. This is something St. John Maximovich spoke against. We saw ambition clouded the hearts and minds of his parishioners in San Francisco when they were building the, the Memorial uh, Dormition Cathedral there. The Memorial Cathedral to the Protection of the Mother of God, I mean, forgive me. And what ended up happening, some of them turned on him. Some have even speculated that they attempted to poison him. They turned on their own bishop because ambition got in the way. They saw the money, they saw the project, and it split the parish. We always have to be careful that whatever we do, whether it's in our parish or whether it's in our home, whether it's between you and your mom and your dad, whether it's between you and your teachers, not to allow ambition to drive its wedge in there and sever the unity, the harmony that we are called to in Christ. As husbands and wives, as children with our parents, as parishioners to our priest, as priests to our bishops, as bishops to the synod. We see where ambition, impatience, and arrogance has caused schisms. It can cause schisms in our own life on a microcosmic level. So we have to be careful, dear ones. We have to always be on watch. We always have to look at what 
Christ commanded in the Gospels. We must ultimately imitate him and be patient and long-suffering. And we must always ask God for discernment and for humility in any project that we look to embark upon. And if you're looking to embark upon a project, whether it's, it's for work or for school, and you feel it might be ambitious, speak to your spiritual father. Ask his blessing. And don't step outside of that. You know, always be accountable to someone. Because if we're accountable to no one but ourselves then there's no limit to the transgressions we might, uh, that we might attain to. There's no limit to the pain that we might cause. So with that said, dear ones, I thank you for tuning in tonight. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful night, and I'll catch you in the next one.